Hey guys, Garbo Animations here. And what you're currently seeing on screen is the original King Ghidorah head sculpt I did inside of Mudbox. As you can see, I kind of just did a quick turnaround of the model here, giving you a good show of what some of the detail work I uh, put into the original model. So it's going to quickly go into a transition here, and we're going to see my uh, 3D printer actually printing the bottom jaw. And you'll sort of see once it goes on here, there we go, that um, you can see it's printing the jaw articulation in this little clip here, which is very, very important so that the jaw is nice and stiff and can articulate correctly. It's about to go into the next clip now where the King Ghidorah body was being 3D printed. This thing's massive. <laughs> like, the body is like the size of the, uh, the Kenner Red Rex. Now as you can see here, I am removing all the supports just so I have the base model to work with. My thought process for this was kinda, if I had a solid body, I could attach things into it a lot easier. So I thought, just because it's still kind of a new concept to me building stop motion puppets. So I wanted it to be functional and as simple as possible for me. So I made a solid body that I could attach things into. So coming up into the next clip here, you can see I am warming up the bottom jaw so that I can attach the two pieces together. Now, they are too stiff initially when I try to put them together. Sorry if you can hear my computer fan. My computer's having a meltdown right now. But, you can see I'm using a hair dryer and I'm just getting that plastic nice and soft. If I don't do that, they won't attach correctly and the jaw will just pop off. And you can even risk breaking the little pegs that, um, the jaw has to pop into the holes in for the top piece. You can see now I'm making sure everything's nice and tight, squishing it all in. I'm gonna test the jaw articulation real quick in a second. As right there, comparing, yep. And there we go, testing the jaw articulation. It's nice and stiff, works just as intended. And then I'm making sure my prints scale with the drawing I did initially. That's very important because you want everything to match up. So now, so this is interesting, and I, I hated having to do this, I felt so bad. But these are lamp necks, just like these little lamps that you clamp to your desk. But the necks are super strong, super poseable, and they were great for the dragon neck. So I just sawed those off, and it worked great. It holds the heads up perfectly. So now you can see here, I'm about to drill a hole, or I guess dremel a hole, into the body piece that I'm going to use to attach the neck into. Which, this part can be kind of tricky if you're not careful because the plastic gets warm when you're doing this and can actually wrap around the Dremel. So it's something I had to be careful of when I was sitting there having to drill the hole in. So, just something to keep in mind. Um, I think I'm just going to do a test here and see if everything lines up. On my end, my video is lagging so bad. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, I was testing to see that the head could um, go into the hole. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm just making sure that the hole that I had in the 3D model for the base of the head is big enough to put the uh, wire, or I guess the lamp neck, into. So I'm just making sure that's the correct scale. This part was fairly easy. I didn't have a lot of issues here, as you can see. So just making sure it went nice and smooth. Turn it off. Whenever you put it down, do not leave it on when you put it down. Make sure it's turned off. So then. I'm just going to rip off some of that plastic covering it has, or I guess the rubber covering, and just make sure it fits nice and snug into the hole that I made. And then I'll end up using a little bit of epoxy to attach that to the base of the head so it doesn't fall out. Like It's, it's pretty stiff in there. You're going to see me move the head around a little bit like that. I'm just testing, wiggling it around to see if it's going to pop out. So. It stays in there pretty snug, but you want to make sure it doesn't come out at all. So I used a two-part epoxy and just made sure that was permanently put into place. So once this is done, I believe the next clip that's going to be coming up is me attaching the wire, or, or I guess the lamp neck, to the base of the King Ghidorah body. And then, I mean, after that, it's just repeating the process for the next two heads. It's the exact same thing tail you also dremel two holes for the back there and attach the tails in the same way you did with the necks so other than that the process wasn't necessarily super complicated 
it was just kind of pricey because each one of those lamps cost like 30 bucks. I had to buy five of them. Um, the plastic used to 3D print the pieces. I, I bought the 3D printer just for this project. So, and that was a thousand bucks right there. So, but it, it's definitely not like a cheap thing to create this. So it's not necessarily the way I would recommend if you're starting to just have the idea of getting into stop motion. But I like building things, this is what I do. So it's what I really wanted to do to improve my puppets and create higher quality films. So some of the issues that I had with the other puppets is even though I had the bolts in their feet to lock down onto the set, I still had some balance issues. So my plan for the King Ghidorah going on into the future once I get my new pieces, um, he, is he's gonna have a rig that will hold him up. So what I'm hoping is gonna happen is I'll be able to attach a rig into his back and this guy can actually jump around, he can run, he can fly. Um, that's the whole idea now. I really want to improve the motion that these puppets have. Like yes, I mean, the other stall motions I've done aren't necessarily horrible, but if I can make them better, that's what I'm going to do. So as you can see here, yeah, I'm just attaching the tails like I was saying earlier. So unfortunately, for the next little while, since I'm kind of stuck on waiting on pieces, I won't be really uploading anything updating Ghidorah. So I'm probably going to start turning my attention onto the updated Godzilla stop motion puppet. So if you guys like this video and want to keep updated on this project, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.